Hello and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video, I want to show you exactly what is the difference between an Azure Service Bus queue and an Azure Service Bus topic. And believe me, this is something that you really need to know. It's a very simple thing, but I found out that very often people don't really understand why we actually do have these two different concepts and when particularly are they useful. So in this video, I will uncover it all for you. Also, please keep in mind that I will show a lot of code here that kind of like will also showcase how you can connect basically send messages to an Azure service bus and also process and receive messages from an Azure service bus. So the code might be useful. And if you want to get access to the source code, please make sure to become a Code Wrinkles member. So join the membership on the ambassador tires. So all ambassadors after each video get access to the source code that I used for that specific video and eventually also other resources. Now let's go to work and first of all, let me show you exactly what I have set up in Azure. So here I have an Azure service bus namespace, a very, very simple one in which I have created one queue, which is called greetings. And I have created one topic, which is called greetings topics. I couldn't use the same name, so I needed to give a different name. Now, the only thing that we need to pay attention to is that if we have this topic, on a topic, we can have different subscriptions. And in fact, if we take a look here, you see that I have created two different subscriptions. So processor one and processor two. And just when we run the code and we'll explain exactly and see actually what happens when we send messages in these different or using these different technologies, we might have different behavior in our receivers. Now let's go to Rider and take a look at what we have. Here I have a very basic setup where I have a publisher, which is a console application that is responsible to, well, just simply send messages. And here I have already installed the Azure messaging service bus library that you need to use or to install via NuGet in order to be able to run this code sample or run code similar to this. Now, the idea of this publisher is that its only role is obviously to publish or to send some messages. In our case, these are some very simple messages like a hello world string and basically that's it. However, when we want to send a message, there are two different things that we need to take into consideration. First of all, when we want to send a message to a queue, obviously the first step is always to create a new service bus client. And for that service bus client, we need to provide a connection string. I have added a connection string to this common class as a constant. And I won't show you that because I don't want to make this connection string visible in this case. But however, you can just provide the connection string for your Azure service bus namespace there. Then the idea is that from the service bus client, we need to create a sender because what we want to do, hey, we want to send messages. So we create a sender. And in this case, we just want to specify here that we want to send the messages to a specific queue. The queue name is also defined in the constants in this common class. And then we can just create a message. And for this, we have the service bus message class in which we pass the body of the message, which needs to be a string. In our case, is it, it's a hello world, but usually in your applications, you might have basically your objects that are serialized to JSON and you would have the JSON string in here as a body. And then there's nothing more simpler to do than just wait sender and well, send the message. The message will be sent to the queue that we have specified for this specific sender. Let's take a look at how we send messages when we want to send them to a topic instead to send them to a queue. So here, obviously the first step is exactly the same. We need to create a service bus client, but then we also need to create here the, the sender. And in this case, we want to have the topic name. So we use the topic name that we have in this comment. And then we once again have this service bus message, hello world, and then we just send it. And basically that's it. So the mechanism through which we send messages is actually quite the same. The only difference is that, hey, in this first instance, we specify the queue name. In the second instance, we specify the topic name. So the message will be then redirected or sent to our topic instead of our queue. So it's kind of like really, really simple. And we want to do this sequentially. So first I have commented out this because I first want to send to a queue and then I want to come here and send to to a topic and see exactly how the consumers will behave because that's actually the most important part. So in the consumer, I actually have, the, this is actually a background worker template. And here I have two background services. Now the first background service is the queue listener. And as the name implies, this service listens to the queue that we have defined. Now, the way that we do things here, first of all, when we start up the service, we want to create the necessary infrastructure. So we'll create a service bus client. But in this case, 
what we want to do is we want to create a processor. Therefore, in this from the client, we don't create a sender, but we create a processor instead. And here we specify the queue name. Now, when we create a processor, there are these two very important events, like the process matches async, which is an event. We can see it, it's an event. And we have this process error async, which is also an event, which is triggered when there is an error processing a, a certain message or while processing a certain message. And obviously we need to provide some handlers for them. And that's why we have these two private methods in which we have, first of all, the message handler. That's basically the process message event args. It's what's coming in to my handler. And then basically I can take a look into the body of the message. So I can, it's by default, it comes in, in uh, binary data, but I can transform it to string. And then there is this important thing with complete message async. So this kind of like marks the message as completed and Azure service bus will then kind of like most probably delete that specific message because it is already consumed. And then we just write something in the console. Now for the error handler, we just write in the console if we have an exception and that's basically it. So nothing more complicated than that. However, let's take now a look at this topic listener. Now here there are already some differences because here we have the service bus client. We create it the same way. So there's really nothing to it. However, when we want to create the processor, see that in this case, so we have the topic name, but then we also have the first subscription. So in this case, we specify for this specific consumer one that it kind of like needs to listen to this first subscription, not to the other one. And remember, we had two different subscriptions in our Azure Service Bus template. And then we have the message handler and the error handler, and that's exactly the same. However, this create processor, you see that the method is it's actually exactly the same as for the queue create processor. Now, the difference is because if you just specify here only one string, it will by default assume you want to send it to a queue. But it's kind of like you see here, it's the queue name. So here the parameter is string queue name. However, if you go to the topic listener, here we provide two strings. And if we take a look at what this method definition says, the first one is the topic name and the second one is the subscription name. So based on the number of parameters or arguments that you pass into this method, kind of like you define already, if you want to listen basically to a queue, if you specify only one, or if you want to listen to a topic and more than that, to a specific subscription in that specific topic. And now I would like to run these applications and see or take a look what exactly the main difference is between them. So let me first run the first consumer. So I'll run this one. Then I will run the second consumer. Second consumer is, by the way, exactly the same. The only difference is that it listens or it subscribes basically to the subscription with the, the second subscription. So the second one. So let's just also run this application. And now when everything is started, let me also run the publisher. So we have the publisher that is running right now. You see that, okay, sending greetings. So it means, it means that the publisher has already sent the message to our queue. And in this case, if we go here to consumer two, we see nothing happens. If we go to consumer one, we see that, hey, something happened. The so consumer one received one message. So bottom line here is when we sent this topic to a queue via the publisher, in fact, we had two consumers, but actually only one of them did get to process the message. Now, let me maybe just stop only the publisher because right now what I want to do is come here to the publisher and I want to comment out this one and I want to actually comment this one. So now we can run the publisher because it will send to the topic. So let me run the publisher. So we see that here sending greetings, which is okay. And then if we go to consumer two, we see consumer two received message hello world, which is fine. But if we go to consumer one, consumer one received message hello world. So that's actually very, very cool because when we sent it to the topic, actually the same message was then sent to all the subscriptions that we had at this certain topic. So in this case, basically both of our consumers did get to actually process this specific message. So bottom line is that whenever you send a message to a queue, no matter how many subscribers you have to the specific queue, that message will be processed only once and you don't know exactly by which worker it will be processed. However, when you 
send or publish a message to a topic, that message would actually be, let's call it replicated to all the subscriptions that you have to that specific topic. And if you have different subscribers, basically, or different consumers that are subscribed to the different subscriptions that you have there, they will all receive a copy of the exact same message. Now, let's understand when exactly this might be useful. Let's assume, for instance, that we have an image processing service or something like this. So we got a file uploaded, an image uploaded somewhere, and then we do need to do some processing on that specific image. Now, the thing is that processing an image kind of like performs always the same thing. So it's the same way that we process the image. However, this task can be fairly long running. So in this case, we could send this to a queue, the message, hey, a new image has been uploaded, probably providing a URL to the blob storage or wherever that image is. And then one subscriber or one consumer of that queue will simply just take and do the processing of the image. This is important because then if you have a lot of messages coming in and the processing of the images kind of like takes a while, then you have other consumers that are able to, well, take the work and process the other images that comes in. So if we have only one worker, that will do that job, it will be actually get blocked until it finishes the job. So even if you still receive 10 other messages in the queue, they will remain in the queue until they expire or until the worker is again available to actually process the image. On the other hand, the topic is important, for instance, in scenarios like, for instance, an eShop. Because here, when you place an order, you might have different services that need to receive a copy of that message because each of the, those services need to perform a different logic. Therefore, you would send that kind of like message that says that an order was placed to a topic that has different subscriptions, one for, I don't know, shipping, one for uh, processing, one for delivery, whatever. And then you would have services that listen to do subscriptions and all of them will receive the copy of that message and will know exactly what to do with them. So that's kind of it. It's really not complicated, but it's a difference that we need to understand. And by the way, even if the naming might be different, exactly the same concepts apply in virtually all other, let's say, technologies that provide with async messaging functionality, even in RabbitMQ and Kafka. But once again, namings might be a little bit different, but those concepts still exist everywhere. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button so that others might discover it easier. And if you are for the first time here, obviously hit the subscribe button so that you can get some more awesome content and I would be totally thankful for that. If you have any type of question or you want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave me a comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.